just want to welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The name that is above every other name. The name that is above sickness and disease. Above darkness. Above anything you may be facing. Jesus. Amen. Won't you just greet your neighbor this morning. Tell them it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I also want to take this time to welcome all of our online viewers. We pray that the same atmosphere that we are experiencing of the presence of God in this place is manifested in your homes. Amen. Hallelujah. So church, just a few announcements. You can take your seats as we bring forth these announcements. Firstly, do we have any new visitors this morning? If our new visitors can raise their hands. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome all of our new visitors. We pray that the Lord just encounters you in a special way this morning. Amen. And to all of our new visitors, please do not leave after the service. Join us at our cafe for a free cappuccino. We would love to get to know you better. Amen. Amen. So just a few announcements, church. This Thursday evening at 7 p.m., we have our culture groups. Amen. We are excited. Amen. So if you are not connected to a culture group, please speak to Marley or Henny. They will get you guys connected. This is such a special time for us in the week. It's our midweek pit stop. And it's so good to gather with our brothers and sisters. Amen. Even in the week. Hallelujah. Then on Friday morning, we have our watchman prayer at 5 a.m. Amen. This is where we come. We intercede. We contend for the glory. So we want to invite you to come in in the morning. Friday morning at 5 a.m. Then on Friday night, we have our youth. We are all our young people. Amen. So to all of our young people, please join us on Friday night. We heard that you guys had a powerful time in the presence of God. Amen. So do not miss it. Invite your friends, your family, all the young people. Amen. And then church, just a note also, our cafe bookstore is having a 50% off on all of the books and stuff that they have there. Please do not miss out this amazing opportunity. And if you are a Divan Law Ministry partner, you also get a percentage of a 60% discount off. Amen. So do not miss this opportunity. Hallelujah. So I just want to invite Rian to give us a few announcements as well. Amen. Morning, family. Uh, okay, 48. 48. It's not my age. I'm much, 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 much younger than that. About seven months. But um, that is where we're currently at, at our Generator and Beyond project. So I want you to encourage you guys to go out this week. Go and contact your family members, friends, uh, businessmen in the area that you know that will you know like to support the church in our project. Please, uh, we don't want to keep you in the dark for much longer. So we trust the Lord, you know, to work with their hearts and to get the people involved in this project so we can carry on with uh, God's work. Amen. And then you, you, have you ever watched those movies where the guys, you know, the Marines, and when they see each other after a long period of time, they go, hoorah. So this is a hoorah to all the men. Can I get a hoorah this morning? Ah, thank you very much, men. I like that enthusiasm. All right, so Friday night um, at Opi Plot, not Opi Plaza, they serve beer there. So it's Otto Opi Plot. We will give you the direction. So if you want to join our men's evening, it will be from 6 to 9 at Opi Plot. We will give you the directions and address later on. Everybody needs to bring their own meat, uh, cutlery, and, you know, cool drink and stuff. And please, uh, if you know about of someone, you know, there's, there's wives that need husbands, there's children that need fathers, but not dictators. They need priests in the house. I mean, so if you want to invite a friend, family member, an uncle, a brother, a friend, whatever the case may be, if you know of someone that needs to realize the importance of being a priest in his house, it is extremely important to invite them. We're going to spend some time with Pastor Devan as he, um, you know, speak about the importance of priesthood in our nation, in our families. So we want to encourage you, invite them. Uh, if you want any more information, you're more than welcome to come speak to me, Johan, um, Diewald Marius. Uh, you can also speak to um, Henny and Oliver. All right, so there's a couple of names. If you want more information, uh, I trust we'll see you guys there. Thank you. My apologies. 
So just to continue, we also have our Connect graduation this morning. Can we just give the Lord a praise offering for all of these new believers, these new members of the family? And I just want to call Michelle Serfontaine, who will be doing our Connect graduation. Amen. I mean, as Nadine said, we are sharing in this wonderful opportunity of introducing all of our new members to the church this morning. Are you not excited about that? Amen. May this be evidence in this morning of the growth of our church just to show each and every one that we really do care about bringing in the new souls, but not just that, about making them feel welcome and home in our church. Amen. I mean, so I'm going to call all of the graduates to the front. If they can just line up from the drums to the piano side, that would be much appreciated. But before I start, I just want to read a scripture for you. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. It says, For by one spirit we, are, we were all immersed and mingled into one body. And, sorry. <laughs> uh, into one body. And no matter our status, whether we are Jews, non-Jews, oppressed or free, we are all privileged to drink deeply of the same Holy Spirit. So that is our prayer for all of our new members in this morning. So our new members will be Anita Best, Quentin Bosov, Catherine Berger, Jaku Diedrichs, Karl Hopkirk, Michael Nagel, Vianney Nagel, Yusan van der Merwe, Cecilia van der Walt, and Baron van Diepende. Amen. I just want the church to stand with us and let's welcome this new family member. Amen. Amen. These are our new brothers and sisters within this body. Amen. And we are excited to have them. I want all of you just to stretch forward your hands as we're going to bless them this morning. Amen. Lord Father God, we thank you for adding to this body, Lord Father God. We are so excited to have them here, Lord. We are excited about their journey with you ahead, Lord. And I, I prophesy and I declare, Lord, that they are sealed by the blood of Jesus, Lord. That their journey is set forth in you, Lord, led by your word. Let your word be a lamp unto each one of these feet, Lord Father God. Holy Spirit, that you will pour out, be poured out upon them and just take them deeper and deeper with you, Lord. Lord, I pray that they will always have surrendered hearts, Lord, that they will be always sold out, that you will always be their first love, Lord, that you will be the king enthroned upon their hearts forever and ever and evermore, and that they will still do mighty works in your kingdom, Lord, and be used mightily for your glory. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. We are so excited for you guys. And it's a privilege for uh, Pastor Divan and myself to have you with us and to join us. And we trust that you will enjoy this church. You will enjoy your journey. You will experience a lot of growth in the Lord. And uh, if there's ever in more information or more things you would like to know, always we are all, you're always welcome to ask us and just enjoy it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's just get to our feet this morning, church. We're going to kick off our morning service. And before we start, I just want to read for you from Psalms chapter 63, verse 2 to 5. 
And the King David, he says, I'm energized every time I enter into your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and drink in more of your glory. And it goes on to say, for your tender mercies mean more to me than life itself. How I love and praise you, God. Daily I will worship you passionately and with all my heart. My arms will wave to you like banners of praise. I overflow with praise when I come before you. For the anointing of your presence satisfies me like nothing else. Amen. So church, may this be your prayer. May this be your heart's desire that the anointing of his presence satisfies you like nothing else. Amen. So even as we get into a time of praise and worship, as King David says, his arms are like banners ready to praise the Lord. And we all have hands this morning to lift up shouts, to lift up praise. Amen. To the King of all kings. So I want to encourage you this morning as we praise, as we worship, the King is in this place. Amen. The King of kings is in this place. Amen. So we're going to praise, we're going to worship, and out of our hearts, let there come this explosive joy, this extravagant praise to worship Him this morning. So I just want to invite you to the front this morning as we get into a time of praise and worship. And we're just going to open this meeting in prayer. Hallelujah. Won't you just pray in the Spirit with me this morning? Hallelujah. Lord, we just come to worship you. We just come to bless your name. Truly, there is none like you, Jesus, the name that is above every other name. We come this morning and we say, Holy Spirit, you are so welcome in this place. We pray, Lord, that you would come and fill this place with your presence, fill this place with your glory. Lord, we are hungry for your presence. We are hungry to seek you this morning, to encounter you. We pray, Lord, the word that comes forth may transform your people this morning. May our praise and worship be a sweet fragrance unto you this morning. And we invite you in this place. We say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come and have your own way in this place. Receive all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. And let your will be done in this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up a shout of praise and thanksgiving. Come on, are you excited to bless the Lord in this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we come and bless your name. We come and praise you. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. So we sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hey, almighty ones. Hey, bless the Lord, you heavenly host. His praises. Come on and sing. Come on, come on and bless Him. Come on and praise His name. Come on, come on and bless Him. Hey. Come on, come on and bless Him. Come on and praise His name. Come on, come on. And sing it one more time. Come on, come on. Come on, come on and bless Him. Come on and praise His name. Come on, come on. Bless the Lord this morning. Bless the Lord, you heavenly host. Everything that has been. Praise the Lord, all you is angels. And let all, and let all the earth sing for this praise. Come on and sing. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise the same. Come on, come on.
you bless the Lord of this morning, amen. He is holy and he is worthy of all our praise. Thank you, Lord. We're so thankful this morning. Oh, oh, for the Lord. For the Lord delights in showing mercy. Oh, it's who we are. For the Lord delights in showing mercy. Oh, He showed me mercy and love. And for the Lord delights in showing mercy. Come on, can you declare one more time? Hey. And for the Lord delights in showing mercy. Oh, oh He was merciful to me. Jesus, oh, I know I've received the power and the authority. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when to someone to next to you tell them hey when I move my body oh no no tell them when you move your body when you move your feet when you open your mouth look darkness is fleeing oh come on this morning because of what Jesus did we can walk in his authority and power we can walk in his strength and his might hey come on hey 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 oh strongholds are coming down hey when I move, come on, hey, hey. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, yeah, come on, you play this darkness, hey. please. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, can you sing that again? Can you sing that again? Darkness, please. When I move my body, when I move my feet, yeah, come on. Jesus, he's exalted high. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, come on, can you give him praise? Just lift him on high this morning. Just lift him on high. Just lift him on high. Oh, la 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 He's above everything. He's above everything. You're above my needs. You're above what I think I want. Oh, Jesus, be lifted high. Jesus, be lifted high. Jesus, be lifted high. Oh, declare it in your life. My Jesus, be lifted high. Jesus, be lifted high. Jesus, be lifted high. Oh, sing it over your mind. Oh, Jesus, be lifted high. Jesus, be lifted high. Jesus, be lifted high. Oh, in your heart, in your soul. And Jesus, be lifted high. Jesus, be lifted high. So we sing us over counterculture. And Jesus be lifted high. Jesus be lifted high. Jesus be lifted high. Oh, sing it over one day. And Jesus be lifted high. Jesus be lifted high. Jesus be lifted high. Give him a shout of praise. Hey. Come on, this morning we're not waiting for something to happen until we praise Him, hallelujah. Hey, well, I'm not waiting for the chains to break. Hey, I'm not waiting for the prison to open. Hey, I am free by the wonder of the cross. Jesus did it, and it's finished. I'm not waiting for the mountain to move, no. I'm not waiting for addiction to lose. I am free by the power of the cross. Jesus did it. It is finished. Sing it out. When Christ got up, I got up too. And lost its grip, hell had to lose. I said yes to Jesus and everything changed. Jesus did it. It is finished. Oh, he did it. Once and for all. Oh, it's completely done. We're not waiting for fear to leave. We're gonna praise him, hallelujah. Hey, I'm not waiting for the fear to leave. No, I'm not waiting for depression to flee. I am home by the wonder of the cross. Jesus did it. It is finished. Oh, I'm not waiting for the sea to part. No, I'm not waiting for my healing to start. I am home by the power of the cross. When Christ got up, I got up too. Hell lost its grip, hell had to lose. I said yes to Jesus, and everything changed. Jesus said, it is finished. Sing that again. When Christ got up, I got up too. Hell lost its grip, hell had to lose. I said yes to Jesus, and everything changed. Jesus said, Christ God. 
So I want to speak to you this morning about being yielded vessels. And our scripture is from Romans 12 verse 1. Uh, but before we go, I just want to go remind you of the various ways of giving. If you want to use a EFT faci um, facilities, you will see the detail appearing on that screen on your right hand side. We're still waiting for that one, part of the project as well. If you want to make use of the card facilities, it will be at the back and you can give via cash to one of the crew members. You can also ask for an envelope if you want to make a pledge or make use of the Zappa code. Amen. So when Pastor D read the scripture uh, last week, I thought this is actually a very good offering scripture as well because Paul is actually speaking about giving. And I'll show you in a moment what I mean. So let's go to Romans 12 verse 1. You can just shout out Amen when you're there. So it reads, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, brethren, and that part, Pastor Devan, already covered. It is where God says, listen here, I'm serious, I'm speaking to you, I want you to focus now. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is 
that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the scripture says that we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Now, that means to be obedient to the will of God. I mean, do you agree? It says that is our reasonable service. Now, if you take everything that Jesus did for us and everything that he's still doing for us, especially in these times, I mean, that will be our reasonable service to be obedient. Do you agree? So how do we do that? Number one, the scripture says, do not be conformed to this world. Now, the word of God says that he who gives seed to the sower and bread food will supply and multiply the seed that we sow. Now, see, God supply the seed, but it remains our choice where we sow that seed. We can either sow it into the world, into the kingdom of darkness, or we can sow it into his kingdom. I mean, it was meant to sow into the kingdom, but it remains our choice. That's why, number two, we need to renew our mind. Now, we make this part very difficult, much more difficult than it's supposed to be. And actually, it's quite simple. It's very easy. Ask yourself this. Which part of your body gives the command for you to sow? It's your mind. Amen. That is why the scripture encourages us to renew our mind. Not to be conformed to, to this world, but to renew our mind. Now, to renew our mind is to budget, it is to plan, but it is also to make a choice whether we're going to sow into the kingdom of darkness or into the kingdom of light. Amen. Renew your mind daily. Say no to the fleshly desires. That is what we do. The scripture says further that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now ask yourself this this morning. Is it God's will for you to tithe? Is it God's will for you this morning to give offering? There's no need for us to go to Malachi 3.10 again. Amen. Give us our yielded vessels. God needs us, his children, to manifest his blessings, his promises on earth to his church. Amen. That is why we need to be yielded vessels. That, will, that, will, that is why we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, especially when it comes to uh, supporting His church, uh, when it comes to projects and all that kind of stuff. You know, God cannot drop a bag of money here. He needs us to manifest that on earth. That is why we are obedient this morning, and we're going to take out a seed, and we're going to bless God in this morning for the week that we had, the week that we planned, the year that we planned, the, every plan of this church, that His will will be done not only in this church, but in our city, in our nation, in, in this world. Amen. So church, when you're ready to give, I want you to get to your feet. So Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to sow into your church, Father. And I pray this morning, Lord, that we will let go of the fleshly desires and that we will give as we are led by the Spirit. I pray that you will rebuke the devourer of seed. I pray that you'll bless every cheerful giver in this house, Lord. And I pray that you will multiply the seed that we sow to further your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, family. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to give a donation or offering, there are three ways to do so. Via EFT, making use of Zappa, or you are welcome to make use of our card facility at church. Your generosity makes a difference. To the light of grace, and just like Lazarus.
Just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back to life. Oh, you brought me back to life. Oh, you brought me back to life. You brought. Jesus, oh, let's take that moment on the enemy. The enemy thought 
we thank you all this morning. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's no longer I. It's no longer I. Oh, but it's Jesus in me. You're my life, you're 
we surrender everything to you this morning, Jesus. Oh yes, just begin to cry out this morning. Oh, make known the desires of your heart. Oh, come on, let's cry out this morning to the Lord. Oh, in you is all we need. In you is all we need. So Lord, we surrender everything. We surrender
and take joy, my King. He did what you he made me, made me a sweet, sweet sound. Oh, make it be a sweet.
Just release a song. Just cry out to him. He's holy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all our worship. Oh, Jesus, you're worthy. There's nobody like you, Lord.
everything to you, Lord. We surrender our wills. We surrender our emotions this morning, Lord. We surrender our hearts. Lord, we declare that it is yours, Lord. You are everything that we need. In you is all that we need. You are all in our all, Lord. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Come on, just love on him this morning. Just tell him how much you love him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We pray that your name will be lifted on high. We pray that you will be exalted in this day. We pray, Father, that you will be glorified in this morning. We pray that we will not leave you the same way we came in. Lord, but when we leave, may there be a testimony on our mouths of what the Lamb has done, of what the Jesus has done, of how His power has set us free, of how you have transformed us, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. There is nobody like you, Lord. So come and have your will, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord, I pray that no glory will go to a man or to a woman, but that you will be magnified, that you will be exalted where you are, Lord, because we love you. We love you. Hallelujah. If you agree, just shout out, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Come on, give him glory this morning. Give him praise in this morning. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he's wonderful. Amen. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's about nothing else but Jesus. To live is Christ. To die is gain. I live because Jesus lives. I live because I've been resurrected with his power. With him in life. In power. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just go greet a few people and tell them, now is a good time to be alive. Just walk to somebody else, tell them, hey, you made the right decision today. God has an appointment with you. I hope you tell them that with much more conviction. Amen. Come on, I don't see that you greeted people. Come on, get to your feet. Go, go greet a few people. Tell them, come on, God has got an appointment with you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, there's nothing like the presence of Jesus, amen. We should never become familiar with this. We should never get to a place where this is tedious for us. Why? Because we know that we are kings and priests here on earth. We love to worship. We give our worship and our offering because we know who we are and we know who He is. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you've got your Bibles with you, which I do hope you do, please open to the book of Romans 6, verse 12 to 14. Romans 6, verse 12 to 14, as well as Galatians 2, verse 17 to 20. So those two scriptures are Romans 6, verse 12 to 14, and Galatians 2, verse 17 17 to 20. Hallelujah. While you're looking, just shout out the end of myself. Oh, you don't sound convinced yet. Don't worry, I'm taking you somewhere. (laughs) Amen. If you're ready, just shout out hallelujah. Just to all the online viewers, we welcome you in this morning. We pray that you experience the same atmosphere that is here at your homes. I'm praying that today you will be set free, that you will be changed, amen, and transformed by the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. So are you ready to read? You can read with me. I'm reading out of the New King James. So let's, let's begin. Therefore, do not let sin, what? What? Okay, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should, what? Obey. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Because if it does, you will have to obey. If you allow sin to to reign in your life, you have to obey. And listen to this. To obey means to be under its authority. So be careful that you do not let it rain. You have a choice every day, every morning when you wake up. I have a decision to say, I'm no no longer under the law of sin, the law of the flesh, but I'm now under grace. Amen. You have got that decision, but if you don't do it, 
listen carefully, that you should obey in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as an instrument. That word instrument has the Hebrew meaning of a, a, a weapon. Of a weapon. Just turn to someone and say, this is serious stuff. Look to somebody else and say, you can be a weapon. Either for the king of dark, kingdom of darkness or for the kingdom of light. Which are you? You see, the danger in this is, is that, if, that we, if we do not, if we are not careful with what we allow, with, what, with what, how we deal sin in our lives, we might become a weapon in the wrong hands. And you might sit here this morning and say, but I have been a Christian for 25 years. Let me tell you, if there's not something that's happening in your life daily, you are no longer a weapon in God's hands, but you're now a weapon pointing towards the kingdom of God, bringing forth destruction, which God actually wants to destroy and, and, and get out. Amen. So this is very serious this morning. And the word I'm bringing to you is not a, a, a word of condemnation or a word that, uh, that needs you to feel heavy, but it's something that I believe that if you catch it today, that you would say, my God, I missed out on the secret that God has for my life. I missed out on the secret of victory that God has over my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Then we continue. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. This is a power declaration from the Apostle Paul. He is saying, hey Marley, you are not on the, under the dominion of, of the law, but you are under grace. He is saying, son of God, child of God, that's not a goal for you to reach. That is not a standard I'm, put, I'm placing before you. But I'm telling you today that in Christ Jesus, you are no longer under the dominion of the law, but you are now under grace. That means something happened that Jesus defeated the, 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 the um, sin and the enemy for Forever. now you are free not you're going to be free but you are free amen it no longer has to happen so there's already that victory we have that sin no longer has dominion over us but what happens why does it have dominion over us why are we still walking in what we're walking i'll tell you soon i just want you to just to to turn someone behind you just let's let's release a declaration today for sin shall not have dominion over you for you, are under, uh, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Come on, say it with conviction like you know it. Say, you, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Tell it to yourself. Say, myself. I am no longer under the dominion of the flesh of sin. For I am not under the law. But I'm under grace. Come on, give God glory if you believe it. Amen. So Paul knew something. He knew that what Jesus did on the cross, it was perfect. Forever. It's, it's done. Completely. Assuredly. There's, there's no doubt about it. The day that you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you, get, you took your old man, man and you gave it to Jesus on the cross. It was crucified with Jesus on the cross. And it was done. The moment that you were resurrected, who came out? The new man. Whoever is in Christ is now a new creature. The old has gone, but the new has come. Hallelujah. Amen. But look, let's look at what Galatians 2 verse 17 to 20 says. And it says, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Whoa. This is the same Paul that just said, hey, listen, you are no longer under the dominion of sin. You're under grace. Isn't this a bit contradicting now? What is Paul saying here? He is saying that the work of Jesus is complete. There is no doubt about it. He continues to say, certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. There's nothing wrong with the work of, the, of, of Jesus on the cross. There's nothing wrong with His blood. The problem is after I've received my uh, gift of grace, after I've received my redemption, something went wrong. Do you agree with me? So it is very true in what He says that you are not under the law of sin, but you are under the law of grace. 
But who took you out of under grace? What happened there? Shall, shall we call Jesus a liar? Amen. Because that's what we sometimes do. Oh, you know, it's this enemy. It's, this doesn't work. You've prayed for me 10,000 times. You've laid your hands on me, but nothing happens. The problem is not the prayer. The problem is not the blood of Jesus. The problem is not His cross. But there is one thing that you need to do and you need to listen closely today. You need to die. The problem is not a pastor or a preacher or the word or the blood or the cross of Jesus. The problem is, yep, it is us. It is I. There's that song on TikTok. Hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. So the people make reels on that. So let that tune go through your mind this morning as, as we're getting deeper into this word. Amen. You, you just, whatever you hear, it's like, hi, it's me. I'm the problem, Lord. This morning, it's me. You see, God's simple key to victory is not a standard, but it's something, he, it's a way of life that He desires for you to live by. Because listen what the apostle says further. He says, uh, ooh, here I am. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Are we going to sin? Yes, we are going to sin. We're, we're human beings, right? And I'm going to explain to you right now what happens. Because maybe you're sitting in this morning like, it's already me, Lord. Hi. Um, maybe you're sitting like that here this morning. But what I want to remind you of is that there is no much more beautiful miracle than that of the gospel of Jesus. There is no greater miracle than what Jesus did for us on the cross. The day that we say, Jesus, I surrender my life, I surrender my will, everything to you, that is so powerful. Because let me tell you, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you work, you can never earn the grace of God. The grace is freely given to us, amen? We can never work for it. That's why it's the biggest miracle. Just imagine, once you were this way, but after you gave your life to Jesus, man, you were completely different, amen? You can't explain it. It's a miracle. But look what happens now. Sometimes, not sometimes, all the times, like we are being taught in, in deliverance as well, when, when we are saved, what gets saved? Our spirits, amen? But our souls still needs deliverance daily, I mean, Our souls are still very much alive. Would you agree with me this morning? I mean, you see, we, we, we sometimes over depend on our feelings and our emotions and all those things. And that's a, one of the biggest reasons why we sit with a selfish church now, a selfish generation. Why? Because you don't understand how I feel. You, don't know, you haven't been what I've been through. But that thing needs to die, amen? That thing needs to be crucified. So just remember, you are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. Now, when Jesus came to die for you on the, on the cross, you gave your life to him. You got deposited something. Just say, I received the Holy Spirit. I received his love, his light, his power, his authority. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. You received all of those things. But now for that which is inside of you that the Lord already gave you, for that to come out, something needs to happen. Because sometimes we don't walk in our God-given purpose. We don't walk in the promises God has for us because of one problem. We call it, we call it the flesh. Amen. We call it the flesh. But here's the problem with what we're sitting with today. We like it. We love it. We love our souls. We love our desires. We love our hobbies and things like that. We love it. What is the problem now? For that which God has placed within you, it is now being hindered like a door that's being shut and it cannot get out. Amen. The problem with this is, the problem with the love of life and our desires and things like that, it is spelled like this, A-C-E-L-F. Amen? So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then you give me the relevant answer. And the hint is it's the word I spelled out to you, so just hint, hint. 
Why do we lash out in anger or frustration when we feel that we've been attacked? Okay, why do we get jealous? Why do we get envious of someone's success, of someone's ministries? Okay, why do we cheat and lie? Self, self is the issue, amen? And we react and we behave a certain way, the way we do, because this thing, the ayah like we say in Afrikaan, self has not yet died, amen? We are still yet to walk in that. But I'm going to get to you there now, amen? Are you, do you, are you receiving something this morning? So let's, let's get into it. Let's look at the true enemy called self. Let's look at the true enemy called self. This morning, I want to just remind, I just want to encourage you, not encourage you, but I want to make you aware that this is truly a real struggle. I'm not standing here before you this morning and uh, I'm, I'm God, God's gift to Christianity. I've got this under the knee. No, this is a serious word, amen? This is something serious and this is for each and every one of us, Amen. You need to understand that each day we wrestle with, am I going to lay down myself, let Jesus live through me, or am I going to fulfill my own desires? Amen. Can you relate with that? Every morning, I mean, with, with me with chocolates, it's that every day. Like, am I going to eat it? Am I not going to eat it? And then I eat it, and then I repent after that. <laughs> because I eat a whole slab by myself. I mean, but every day you are faced with such decisions and choices. What am I going to do? Do not present your, your bodies as a weapon, as an instrument of unrighteousness, but rather present it as a weapon to righteousness. Amen. Do not let sin reign over your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's so sad because so many times I, I, I've just seen so many um, uh, real life like things happening with, with people struggling with addiction, depression, things like that. They get set free. They're being delivered in a service. You can see how God touches them. And then it's maybe one or two days and they fall back in the same habits. Why is that? Amen. And maybe it's not depression or addiction. Maybe it is you in your, in your marriage. Amen. Maybe it's you in your business. You just can't seem to get the kick on. Whatever you do, you, it's, just, it's like you're going backwards instead of forward. Amen. So, Today, you need to realize that the reason behind the struggle is not called a demon. In some cases, addiction and depression is, yes, but if you continue to surrender yourself to it, if you do not renounce that thing, it will keep coming back, amen? The real struggle cannot be casted out. Yourself cannot be casted out. Therefore, it is not a demon. But there's one thing needed to deal with this thing, and what do we do? We crucify it. It has to die, amen? So let's look at what is the flesh and where did it originate from? Turn with me to Romans 5 verse 12 to 14. Romans 5 verse 12. Just shout amen if you're there. Romans 5 verse 12. Amen. Therefore, just as through a couple of men and women, what does it say? It says one one. One man, I just want to repeat that, one man, <laughs> through one man, <laughs> sinning to, no, I'm kidding. We, we all take the responsibility for that, but ladies, I got you this morning. If you read man, just, no, it's us women as well, but anyway. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something happened. In, in, uh, way back in, in Genesis, when God created man, when He created woman, He created them to be perfect. I mean, would you agree with me? He, he created them to bring them to bring him glory. They were perfect, amen. But until one thing happened that changed everything, one thing came and it shifted everything. And what happened was the moment when Adam and Eve believed the lie of the serpent, the moment that they ate of the fruit, the enemy now had access to sow a new seed in their DNA, which shifted their DNA. And that new seed is called the seed of self. The moment that they accepted the lie of the enemy and ate the fruit, the enemy sowed a seed called self. Why self? Because sin and self will always go hand in hand. Sin and self always goes hand in hand. Why do I say that? Because sin gratifies the flesh. Sin and self always goes hand in hand. And immediately what did Adam and Eve do? They hid from the presence of God. They became self-conscious. They become self-aware. They became self-sufficient. 
they became self-provisioned, amen? Whatever they did, they said, well, we are not good enough in the Lord, so we will make uh, uh, leaves for ourselves. We will hit from the presence of God. What does that do? It takes the self, it takes whatever the enemy placed within you, it enthrones it, 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 it exalts it. No longer are you aware of God, but you're now self-aware, amen? Hallelujah. So that DNA it was against the, 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 um, the uh, what's the initial intent of the Lord. It's not God's desire. It was not God's desire, amen. The moment that that happened, it gave birth to the Adamic nature, to the sinful nature. Therefore, you will find words, these things are the same. Sin, self, the old man, Adamic nature, it's all the same. It's all the same itself. It's self. And nobody should say, oh, sorry, too much, you're looking. No, it's self. That thing needs to be crucified. It's not if you're going through a bad time or a bad day. You need to crucify that flesh. But you don't understand. They're not seeing me in the ministry. Hey, are you busy with Adam's ministry here? Jesus said to become a servant. Amen. He said to deny yourself completely, to pick up your cross and to follow after him. It is not about how you think, what you feel, what is right, what is wrong. Amen. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. We think that we can lift an opinion about everything because we feel we are right. Whoa, we've become prideful. We've become de deceptive. And I'm speaking to myself. The, the Bible says, do not think that you are without sin. You are deceiving yourself and you're calling God a liar. Amen. Each one of us can sit here this morning saying, my God, this is me. I can identify with it. Lord, I've allowed that my self-consciousness, my selfishness, self-awareness has just so absorbed me that I have forgotten completely about the one thing you've given me to have victory over it. Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, when, when that sin was, was birthed, something else kicked in and that was death. In this morning, ask yourself, just quickly, just close your eyes. Ask yourself, what in my life, whether it be my business, my ministry has died because of my reluctance to let go of myself. My reluctance to crucify myself. Hallelujah, you can open your eyes again. So remember now when I say it, sin and self goes hand in hand. Pride, self also goes hand in hand. Why? Because what happens? What, you, you, you saying I'm wrong? You're saying, how can you say that? You don't know what I, you don't know the Lord called me and He anointed me and He gave me a word and He prophesied over me and everything. That is prideful. What pride does, it starts to blame. Just right where you are right now, think of a situation where you begin to blame. Instead of being humble and say, you know what, Lord, your will. Not mine. Think, think of a situation. I can even stand here this morning saying, e, ouch. Amen. None of us are free of this. You see, when I, could, when I deliberately continue to live in the realm of the flesh, compromise will be inevitable. Whenever I continue living or, or allowing sin to reign in my life, compromise will become easy for me. I, 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 I've, I've been witness to it when I was in university. A couple of my friends, we started out saying, yeah, we're going to stay holy. We're going to stay true to who we are here on campus. Just a few weeks later, oh, you know what? I was just thinking the Lord loves me anyway, you know. And they already started giving comp or, or compromising in, in many different areas of their lives. When you do not kill the flesh, when you do not live a lifestyle every day of dying to self, compromise is inevitable for you. And this is what happens. A compromised lifestyle will lead you to a powerless life, to a lightless life. Because it's by the, the light of His grace that we have fellowship with one another, that we have fellowship with Him. Amen. Hallelujah. So taken all together, let's just, let's just say it together. Self is the Adamic nature. Self is the old man. It is the flesh. It is the nature of sin. Amen. It is all of those things. It, there's no separation. Self is those things. It is the old man. It is sin. Amen. So, but let's not stop there this morning. I want to tell you of the great secret that God has for you in your life. Because no matter how, how like, oh, Lord, 
I, I realize now that this is what happened. I want to tell you that Jesus defeated the seed of the enemy once and for all. When, when Jesus died on the cross, he took that seed and he destroyed it. He completely nullified that seed. And in its place, he created, he released a new seed. And what is that seed? It is the new man. It is the new creation. Therefore, it is impossible for you to still be under the law of sin. You are under the law of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. So not only did his work on the cross offer us complete forgiveness of every sin, but Jesus removed the compromised seed of self and sin, and he replaced it with the new creation, the new man. That's why my old man, listen to what Romans 6 verse 6 says, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. The body that used to enable sin to take place, that body has been done away with. It is finished. It is done. Amen. Now we wake up, when we, we were, uh, when we rose up with Jesus, we rose up the new man. Therefore, your sin does not exist for Jesus anymore. Where Jesus is, there's continuous victory. Why? Because the old things have gone. The new has come. But you have to be continually in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So once we nail our old self to the cross, it is finished. It is complete. We know that. But why is this feeling so contradicting? Who, who can say this morning, I get that, I understand that, but why do I still, I struggle with these thoughts. I struggle with these habits. I'm still sitting in this depression. Why, why, is, it, why is that like that? I mean, is there anybody feeling like this this morning? You see, there might be two possible reasons why we're not yet kicking on. There might be a reason why we're not yet walking in that revelation. Because after, after Paul got saved and he, he, he received the salvation, he said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. And you see, they did not say it as a goal or a standard, but the reason why we might still be falling back is number one, because of ignorance. Maybe no one ever ta taught you about it. Maybe you don't know anything about it. So yeah, you don't know. The second thing is you are reluctant to let go of your own desires, your will and your selfishness. So the first reason might be of ignorance. The second reason might be because you are unwilling to die. You are unwilling to let go of your desires and your emotions, your feelings and things. Amen. So I was just uh, focusing on, on Galatians 2.20 and I was reading up a bit on it. And one author said the following. He referred to both Galatians and, and uh, Galatians 2.20 and Philippians 1 verse 21. And he says, so many people make the mistake when... When Paul says to, to live is Christ and to die is gain, they make the, the, the mistake to say, oh, that's something so nice. Every day I'm going to try to do that. I will keep on living my life until Jesus, until it's Jesus, until it's only Jesus living through me. But he says there's the mistake. What Paul actually meant in Galatians 2.20, Philippians 1 verse 21 was that after he got saved, after he realized that he will never meet the requirements of the Lord, he realized, hey, listen, it's no longer worth for me to live. Now I decide that Christ should live in me. It's useless for me to continue living, but Christ in and through me. I make the decision to say, Jesus, I let you live through me now. And the problem with this is sometimes we come, we come to the cross, but when we have to go further, we don't want to say those words, Jesus, you live, in, you live through me now. And that's the reason why you might be stuck, why you might, might be going backwards, hallelujah. You see, this is not a goal. He did not say, okay, one day you will, it will only be Jesus living through you. It is a decision. It is a firm decision every day when you wake up saying, my God, thank you. You have redeemed me. You have washed me clean. Jesus, in this day, I choose. I make that decision. I renounce whatever the enemy, whatever plans, whatever things he's brought into my life. But I choose now that it's no longer I who live. But Jesus, today I decide that you live through me now. What does that mean? God is saying, I want to come live in you. I know that the standards of living for me are so high, but you shouldn't do it. Jesus wants to do that. He wants to come and live in you and with you. He wants to help you be holy and righteous. Hallelujah. So it's not something we do. And you see, that's why so many Christians get weighed down and exhausted. Why? Because you're trying to do it on your own. 
You're trying to walk this road, trying to be righteous to the Lord, but you cannot earn it. There's nothing you can do to earn the grace of God. We should never forget the grace of God, amen. That does not mean we should start sinning, but we should not be forget it, amen, because it's through Christ Jesus. Whoa, I used to struggle with addiction, but Lord, I've made that firm decision that it is no longer I who live, but Jesus in this day, I make the decision that you are living through me now. That means... Any temptation, I now have the ability and the power to overcome it. I now have the ability and the power to say no. I now have the ability and the power to offer my body, my whole being as a sacrifice, as an instrument of God. Amen. It's a decision you make to say, Lord, I realize your standards are high because it's true. If, if you want to live completely righteous before God, it is an, it is an immense task. We need Jesus. He wants to come live in you. Isn't that good news? To die is not fun. It's not nice. I mean, I never heard of someone who's dying like, yeah, so lack it. It's not. It's painful. And that's why this is such a big word. Because it's going to cost you to say, Lord, I lay down my own will and my emotions and my feelings and my desires and the things I feel is right or wrong. I lay it down. I deny myself. I will pick up my cross and I will follow after you. Amen. It will cost that of you every day. You see, dying to self is a sacrifice you bring to God. You bring all you are. You bring all you have and you give it to Him. And what does He see? He sees my child wants to get close to me. I can come live in her. I can come live in him. Amen. So what does it mean for me to die to self? First of all, it is no longer I who live, but I choose to let him live. It's not something, oh, here is a belief, as a belief, as a belief. You come live in me. No, I make the decision. I make that firm decision saying, I'm done with this. Uh, Jesus already gave me the victory over this. I now need to walk in that revelation. And I, I think that's the problem with, with some of us in this day is we receive so much revelation. We receive the truth of God, but we never start to walk in it. It stays dormant. If you receive your deliverance, what do you need to do? You need to renounce the, any ties with that, with that demon, amen? You start renouncing, you start forgiving. The same with this. Jesus died for your sins. He took it away, but what do you need to do? Deny yourself sacrifice yourself lay yourself down offer up sacrifices as your life still smell like a sacrifice to God because death to self means I'm at that place of brokenness before the Lord it's about him it's about Jesus is sacrifice still evident upon your life just think on that a moment do you still smell like a sacrifice hallelujah so to die to self means you let him live. It's a decision you make. Second of all, it is to sacrifice yourself. It's to say, it doesn't matter what I feel or think. I am now, I belong to Jesus. My life is not my own. Everything I am is because of him and his grace. Amen. Therefore, Lord, I give you myself. I offer myself as a sacrifice to you. Amen. Thirdly, it is the weight of God in our lives to produce change and transformation in our lives. An example of that, um, I, I just started reading um, uh, the story about Gideon yesterday. And what caught me was, is that God did call him to say, you're a mighty man of valor. Yada, 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 I will use you. You will set the people free. But God, before he, the Lord could do it, he told Gideon, you see, you see those idols, go destroy them. Be rid of them. Destroy them completely from your lives. Burn them, chop them down. Whatever you do, get rid of that. After Gideon and his men did that, the Lord could now start using him. You see, in death to self, there's a process. I cannot skip turns. I cannot skip corners. I have to die. There's a process to the glory of God and it's death to self. You cannot skip it. No one of us, not any minister, not any preacher, not, not an apostle, not an evangelist. Nobody can skip this process of death to self. We need to die. We need to be dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Otherwise, God cannot do what, what he wants to do in our lives. You see, God is giving you two choices this morning. He's saying, okay, Andrieta, it's like the blessing and the curse. 
an example. You can choose human skill and your ability, or you can choose my way, you can choose my presence, but to get there, it's death to self. Without me, it's fine, you'll, you'll do it with your human skill, but my presence will not be there. My power will not accompany you. You will not even be called my disciple. That is how far Jesus goes when he says, we, we do not deny ourselves, amen? So what do we have to do today? What do we do to not skip the process of death to self? How do we get self out of the way? Number, oh wait, 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 consequences first. Sorry for that. Let's, let's do how we do it. Let's do how we do it. There's a reason maybe. So how do we do it? How do we get self of the way? First of all, you have to be crucified. Galatians 2, 20. You cannot skip that process. You have to be crucified. You have to crucify the flesh. Unless you get to a place where you're crucified, the eye cannot be removed out of the way. Have you noticed there's an eye in pride, but there's no eye in humble? Right? Amen? Second of all, you have to make a firm decision. Romans 6 verse 12, today I'm not going to allow sin to reign in my life. Today I declare over my life I am no longer under the dominion of sin, but I am now under grace. Today I make that decision. You have to make a firm decision. Amen. Thirdly, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. But here's the key, daily, not just on a Sunday, not just on a Wednesday at culture group, daily. What does that mean? Oh, Lord, I come to bring you sacrifice of worship. I come to give you my offering. I come to give you prayer. Lord, I come to fast. For those of you saying, I don't fast because I cannot be hungry. Who are you to tell God what you do and not do? If you call yourself a priest and a king of the New Testament, that's something you do. It's what God requires of you. Not just one part or the other part. We give continuous sacrifice. That means we put ourselves on the altar. We fast. We pray. We make, make intercession. We worship. Man, we worship the worship out of the worship. Why? Because we know who we are. We are kings and priests of God. Amen. And we know who, who, who He is. He set us free. He reigns over everything. Amen. He's almighty. He deserves it all. But if we withhold that Ask yourself, why am I withholding it? Is it because of myself or because God told me something? Your answer would be because of yourself. Amen? So let's really look at it again. What's the first thing? How do we get self out of the way? Crucify the flesh. Second of all, to make a firm decision. Thirdly, present your bodies a living sacrifice. When? Only Tuesdays, Sundays, daily, every day. Amen. And then fourth, the fourth point, be hungry to walk in, this, in the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 16 says, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh. And then it continues to say, if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. You will not be able to be led by the Spirit of God without you not first laying down yourself, without you not first crucifying the flesh. Hallelujah. So be hungry to walk in the Spirit. Number five, do not forget His grace. We need His grace. Paul says, he continues at, uh, with Galatians 2.20 to say, but I do not forget the grace of God. I do not forget the grace of God. So to get the self out of the way, you need the grace of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So what are the consequences when I do not die to self, when this is not a lifestyle, when we're not every day choosing to say, Jesus, I choose that you come and live through me. What are the consequences? The first thing is your old desires and lusts will start returning. Your old desires and lusts will start returning. That's why the apostle says, do not, do not give, give your bodies to sin, but rather give it to righteousness. Amen. You make that decision. And if you don't, you will, you will come back a year from here and you'll sit in the same problems, the same issues. Amen. Hallelujah. Number two, you, will not, you cannot be continually renewed or changed. It's, it's actually so beautiful. Jesus says, come and give yourself to me. I will then renew your mind. I will then transform you. But you can never get to a place where you are transformed or renewed if you do not first lay down self. If you do not first uh, um, desire to crucify this flesh, to say, Lord, you know what? I, I am seeking you. I'm seeking your presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three. Luke 9 verse 23 says, you will not have fellowship with the Lord. 
Because he says, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. You will not be able to follow the Lord if you are still inflated with self, if you are still full of self, if your self is being enthroned, is being lifted up. You cannot walk in fellowship with him. There's no room for the kingdom and the will of God in your life. Amen. Number four, Luke 14, verse 25 to 33. Jesus says, if you cannot deny yourself and give up everything, you cannot be called a disciple. If you still live a life of self-gratification, you are not a disciple of Jesus. No matter how much you tell people, I am saved, I am a disciple, you are not. Your fruit speaks differently. Amen. Your fruit reveals something different. Your fruit reveals that you're actually against the kingdom of God while proclaiming that you are for God. Amen. God says that you can, you, can, you can either love the one or the other, but you cannot serve two masters. Amen. You are either for Him and for what He stands and for righteousness and for death to self, or you're for sin and gratifying the flesh, doing whatever you want with your temple. Why? Because you are not for Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Amen. Matthew 10, verse 38, that's number five, says you are not worthy of Jesus. Jesus said if you cannot forsake everything, if you cannot deny yourself, you are not worthy of me. Do you understand how serious this is? This is intense. This is not me telling you you're not worthy of Jesus. Jesus is telling you if you cannot, if you are still reluctant to let go of yourself, of your pleasures, of your desires, of your self-consciousness, I cannot bless you. You are not worthy of me. Amen. That is pretty serious. Amen. Then Luke 5 verse 37 to 39 says, you will become like old wine. You'll become irrelevant. You will no longer receive a new touch, a new infilling. Why? Because you're so full of yourself. Amen. Therefore, the flow of the supernatural will start to seize in your life. If you're sitting here this morning saying, yo, I can identify this. The flow of the supernatural in my life has, has stopped. It has decreased. Maybe this is the place where you need to stop this morning and say, yo, Lord, I've missed it. I did not understand death to self. I did not understand this is something I have to do daily. Amen. If we can do this, if we can die to ourselves daily, we know that we are living in God's plan for victory for our lives. We know that we have victory over sin. We have, know we have victory over destruction. And we know that we are walking in His way of life. That's the beauty of it. It's His secret for you. For victory. It's not a standard God gives you. He, he does not say imitate Jesus and then you will be perfect. It's I no longer that live, but it's Christ in me. You need Jesus to come and live in you. Amen. Hallelujah. If we can continue to live a daily lifestyle, if we can live this way of death to self, we will release a fragrance of sacrifice. And what does it attract? It attracts the attention of the Lord. It attracts the attention of the Lord. Just look at the Israelites. God first had to kill them of themselves in order to bring them in the promised land. Amen. A journey that could have been a few days took much longer because they had to die to self. Sacrifice attracts the Lord. It attracts His attention. Amen. It will give you access to the presence and the power of God. Your spiritual maturity will accelerate. Your maturity in Christ will accelerate when Jesus is in you. You will receive His grace. And His grace enables you to do what you need to do. The Apostle says, uh, the Apostle Paul says, everything I am is because of the grace of God. Therefore, I labor. After you have died to self and you receive the, the grace of God, now you can begin to do things for the Lord. Why? Because He's enabling you. He's giving you that desire. He's giving you a deposit from heaven to start manifesting the kingdom of God wherever you go. To go and evangelize. To be successful in, in your place of trade. Amen. Why? Because you've received His grace. Hallelujah. Amen. So I just, I just want you to, to just close your eyes there where you are. And I just want you to think on this this morning. Because death to self is so serious and it's something that we speak over. It's something we neglect. It's something we ignore. But it's something that is vital. It is something, it is, it is a gift that God gives us. It is a way of life that He wants us to live. He wants us to live victoriously. Amen. I want to share a last thought as, as, you are, as your eyes are closed, as you are beginning to pray. 
just focus on the presence of the Lord. I was listening to, to a preacher and he was speaking about how people do not want to die to self because they feel that it's not necessary for them. Jesus even died to self. The river Jordan where Jesus was baptized, was, it, it, it refers to being humble. It refers to being brought low. Today, may this be your place, your Jordan, where you die to self, where you die to the flesh this morning. Saying, Lord, if you needed to die to self, if you needed to die to the fact that you are God and that you are the King of glory, then I need to die to myself today. Amen. Maybe you're sitting here. Maybe you were one of the ignorant ones who didn't know about this. Or maybe, maybe you were reluctant. Maybe up until now you felt that your emotions was bigger. You maybe thought that, that what you're feeling as 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 has merit, but this morning it doesn't matter the reason. What needs to matter today is that you start to cry out and you say, Lord, I realize that I have been making my life about myself. I have been inflating the self. I've been selfish, Lord. I have been self-driven, Lord. And I know that is not your DNA. I know it's the DNA of the enemy, Lord, but therefore I know you have died for me on the cross. I know that you have once and for all dealt with the old man. Lord, I repent today. Come on, you need to cry out this morning. You need to repent. If you need to go on your knees this morning, you need to go on your knees. This is something we need to do daily. Jesus needs to live within us. We need to allow Him to come and live within us. So just begin to cry out. Say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. I've missed it. Lord, I've become selfish. I've deceived myself, Lord. I did not realize how important this was. Lord, it feels like I've been going backwards, like I've been in, in a cycle, Lord, but I know now why. I have not died to myself. I tried to serve in the church according to my own will, to my own desires, Lord, but I realized that you call me to die completely to myself. Whoever hurt you, it doesn't matter. Just release those people this morning, but get on your knees, get on your feet, and just start crying out this morning, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just invite you, Lord. Oh, we are so sorry, Jesus. We are so sorry, Lord. We realize, we realize the importance of us denying ourselves for picking up our cross and following after you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are setting people free today, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You are renewing mindsets. I thank you, Lord. You are transforming hearts in this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you think that this is not for you, then you have deceived yourself. Amen. You have deceived yourself. Daily we need to die to self. What in your life needs to die today? What in your life needs to die today so that you can walk in the promise that God has for you? So you can walk in the ministry, in the purpose that God has for you. Today, what do you need to sacrifice? Nobody's going to lay hands on you this morning. You have to cry out. This morning, you have to repent. You have to ask the Lord to forgive you. You have to ask Him to come and deliver you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We receive your freedom in this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this revelation. We choose in this day that it's no longer I who live, but I let you live in me now, Jesus. I realize, Lord, that the weight, the immense weight of being a son and daughter of God is too big. I therefore invite you, Jesus, come and live in me. Come and live through me. Hallelujah, Sudaraba Kandrebe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So at home, wherever you are now in church, just raise up your hands, amen. Just raise up your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your revelation. Lord, we come in this morning with sincere hearts and we repent, Father, where we have not died to self. The areas where we have not denied ourselves. Lord, please forgive us. Please set us free in this morning. Lord, in this morning, we make the decisive decision to say, it's no longer I, but Jesus in me. In this morning, we decide now 
to say that it's no longer I, but I will decide from now on to let Jesus live through me. In Jesus' name, Lord, I rededicate my life, my heart, my soul, my emotions, my will. I lay it down as a sacrifice. I give it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you receive it, just give God glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, just give Him glory this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To all the online viewers, we, we uh, hope you enjoyed this morning. Amen. Pray that you got set free. Pray that you got touched by the presence and the power of God. We'll see you again tonight at 5 p.m. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Amen. Kira